Hi Year 12, here's our third lesson for the topic of further integration for extension to mathematics and in this lesson we're going to look at partial fractions. So far we've revised integration methods including trigonometric functions, composite functions, substitution and inverse trig functions and we've also looked at t-ratio substitutions. Before we look at how we use partial fractions as a method of integration, let's review how we take a single fraction like this and we separate it into two or more fractions. So the first thing I'm going to do is put these two equal to one another like this. Now on this right hand side, I'm going to join this together with a common denominator, which will be x squared minus one. And I will end up with a multiplied by x plus one plus b multiplied by x minus one on the numerator. Now let's equate the numerators. 1 must be equivalent to a outside of x plus 1 plus b outside of x minus 1. Now there are various methods for solving this, but the easiest one that I find is to make a substitution so that one of these terms goes to 0. So I'm going to substitute in x is equal to negative 1. And that's going to give me 1, this is 0, is equal to b multiplied by negative 2. And so straight away we get a solution for b. b is equal to negative a half. Similarly, now I'm going to let x equal 1 so that the second term goes to 0. I'm going to end up with 1 is equal to a multiplied by 2. And so a is equal to a half. Therefore, 1 on x squared minus 1 is equal to 1 over 2 outside of x minus 1 take away 1 over 2 outside of x plus 1. Now that was a fairly easy one, but we could have quadratic factors like here. And in this case, what we would put it equal to is a over x minus 1 plus, and then for our quadratic factor, we'd put bx plus c. Now it's possible that b is equal to 0 or c is equal to 0. We won't know until we do it, but we're kind of covering all bases because both of them could be non-zero. Similarly, we could have repeated linear factors like here. And what we'll do in this case is have a over x minus 1, that's just normal, plus we'll look and see whether we've got a b over x plus 2, and then we'll also try c over x plus 2 or squared. Now it's possible these could both exist, or this one could be 0. And again, we won't really know until we've worked it out. Okay, let's look at our first example of using partial fractions to solve an integral. We can tell that this is partial fractions because of these linear factors on the denominator. Our first job is to split this into two separate fractions. So just like before, we're going to let negative x all over x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 be equal to a over x minus 1 plus b over x minus 2. And I've skipped a line here. I'm going to let negative x equal a multiplied by x minus 2 plus b multiplied by x minus 1, like this. Let x equal 2. That's going to wipe this out. I'm going to end up with negative 2 is equal to b. Now I'm going to let x equal 1. That's going to wipe this second term out. I'm going to end up with negative 1 is equal to negative a. And so a is equal to 1. And so we can rewrite our integrand as 1 over x minus 1 take away 2 over x minus 2. And we're ready to integrate. These are both logs. It's a fairly simple integration. We get ln of x minus 1 take away 2 multiplied by ln x minus 2. Now you could substitute the 4 in, subtract, substitute the 3 in, but I'm actually going to take the time to tidy this up. Remember your log laws. This 2 comes up here as a power, and the negative means I can divide both of these. So I end up with this. Make sure this makes sense to you. x minus 1, instead of the minus, I've got divide, and the 2 comes up as the power. Now let's substitute the 4 in, take away, substitute the 3 in. So 4 take 1 is 3, 4 take 2 is 2 squared, so ln of 3 quarters. Take away, put the 3 in there, I get 3 take 1 is 2, and then the 1 on the denominator, log 2. And I can join these together as well. So our final answer is ln of 3 eighths. Okay, so here's example 2. And in this case, we have got a quadratic factor. So when we're doing our partial fractions, on top of the quadratic factor, I'm going to put ax plus b. Here's a linear factor, so it just gets a c. All right, let's equate these numerators. So I get 2x squared plus x plus 1 is equivalent to ax plus b multiplied by x minus 1 
plus c multiplied by x squared plus 1. Let's start by making x equals 1, and that will wipe all of that out. 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4 is equal to 2c. And so c is equal to 2. Now let's put x equals 0 in, because that will wipe this one out. So we get 1 on this side, and I've got negative b here, and I've got plus c. And of course c is equal to 2. And so tidying that up, I get b is equal to 1. And then finally, let's just pick something. Let x equal negative 1. We are going to put that in here, which is going to give me 2, take 1, plus 1. And we're going to put it in over here. Take your time to do this. We've got negative a. b is 1. This is negative 2. And what's happening here? I have got 1 plus 1 is 2, but c is also 2. So I've got that mess there. And tidying it up, I get a is equal to 0. And like I told you before, sometimes that will happen, that one of these terms gets knocked out. So, rewritten, we get 1 over x squared plus 1 plus 2 over x minus 1. Now, before we integrate here, it's probably a good idea to check whether your method of partial fractions was actually correct. And it's a very easy check. We're just going to do 1 times x minus 1 plus 2 times, and then in brackets, x squared plus 1. So x take 1 plus 2x squared plus 2 is equal to that numerator. And so we're ready to proceed to integration. This one here is inverse tan. This is a log. And here's our answer. Inverse tan of x plus 2 ln x minus 1 plus c. Here's example 3. And this one is a repeated linear factor. Show that this can be written like this. Now, you can, of course, set this equal to a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1 or squared and go forwards. But in this case, it might be easier to go backwards. So let's start with this and then try and work our way back to here. So we need a common denominator. And it's going to be x plus 1 or squared, x plus 2. So in each case, we've just got to think about what's missing. For this first fraction, we need an extra x plus 1 and an x plus 2. This one here needs an x plus 2. This one here needs an x plus 1 or squared. And we're going to adjust the numerator accordingly. Have a look. x plus 1, x plus 2, plus 2 lots of x plus 2, take away x plus 1 or squared. All right, we need to tidy that up, and hopefully we'll get 3x plus 5. So I've got x squared plus 3x plus 2, plus 2x plus 4, take away x squared, take away 2x, take away 1. Tidying it up. Yes, we get 3x plus 5 all over x plus 2 in brackets multiplied by x plus 1 all squared. Hence, evaluate the integral of 3x plus 5 over x plus 2 in brackets multiplied by x plus 1 all squared dx. Now, we've already done all the hard work. We just need to replace this with that set of individual fractions. Right, what have we got? This is a log, this is a log, and this is just the reverse chain rule. So we've got ln of x plus 1, and then remember this is 2, and then in brackets x plus 1 to the power of negative 2, so raise that power to negative 1, divide by the new power, divide also by the derivative of the inner function, which is 1, and then this one is take away ln x plus 2 plus c. All I can do here is join these two together, that minus, so I end up with ln of x plus 1 on x plus 2, take away, and I've just tidied this up, 2 over x plus 1 plus c. Here's example 4. Now sometimes the denominator will not be factorised and you're going to have to do that first. This one looks like it's going to be difficult, but it's actually not. I can see that if I factorise the first two terms, I get x minus 1. And if I factorise the last two terms, I also get x minus 1. So I get a common linear factor. So fully factorised, I end up with x squared plus 5 and then x minus 1. And we're ready to split that into two separate fractions. So I'm going to let all of this be equal to, here's a quadratic factor, so ax plus b on top, plus, this is a linear factor, so it just gets a c. Okay, let's equate those numerators. We get 3x squared plus x plus 2 is equal to ax plus b multiplied by x minus 1, plus c multiplied by x squared plus 5. Okay, let x equal 1. That's going to wipe all of this out and give me c. So 3 plus 1 plus 2 is 6. 
is equal to 6c, c is equal to 1. Now let's let x equal 0, that'll wipe out a for us. So I'm going to get 2 equals negative b plus 5c and c is 1. So b is going to be equal to 3. And then finally, let's let x equal negative 1. That's going to give me 3, take 1 plus 2 is equal to negative a plus b, which is 3, multiplied by negative 2, plus c multiplied by 6. And substituting what c is equal to and what b is equal to and tidying all of that up, we're going to get a is equal to 2. So this is the same as this. And again, take the time to work backwards and make sure that your partial fractions are correct. All right, what have we got? Well, this is a log. What on earth is this? I'm going to have to split that into two separate fractions like this. OK, so this one here is a reverse chain rule where I have the derivative of the inner function sitting on the numerator. So that's OK. This one here is inverse tan. And this one here is log. So take your time, use your reference sheet. That part's easy, that's just the learn of x squared plus 5. That 2x will cancel out nicely. Here, inverse tan, remember I'm going to have 1 on a if this is x squared plus a squared. So 1 on the square root of 5, I've got 3 up there. Inverse tan of x on root 5, and then plus learn of x minus 1 plus c. The only thing I can do is join these two together. So I'm going to end up with learn of x squared plus 5 multiplied by x minus 1 plus 3 on root 5 inverse tan of x on root 5 plus c. Now just before we finish off, I want to mention one thing. If the degree of the numerator is equal to or greater than the degree of the denominator, then all the partial fractions methods we've been using won't work, like this example. We can never write this in this form. Think about it. a multiplied by x plus 3 plus b multiplied by x minus 3 is never going to generate an x squared term. What we need to do is reduce this numerator down. I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to match the denominator. I've got a 3x squared term, so I'm going to want 3 lots of x squared minus 9, which is 3x squared take 27. Now that over that gives me the 3. Now I need to adjust this so I haven't changed the question. I've got negative 27, add on 12, and I'm going to get negative 15. So splitting this into two fractions, I'm going to get 3 plus 12 on x squared minus 9. And now I have got a fraction that I can split into partial fractions. And so it'll end up looking like that. To finish off, I have a question for you. By writing this fraction in this form, find this integral. So turn the video off and have a go at it. See how far you can get. Here's the answer. You can either write it like that or you can join those log terms together like that. Okay, that's it for this lesson. In our next lesson, we're going to look at integration by parts.